Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor John. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, you all sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. We thank the Lord for being here this morning. And we thank you. Uh, I do personally want to thank everybody that came out yesterday. It was a phenomenal event. Um, it was better than amazing. It was paramount. That's what it was. It wasn't epic. Everybody's doing epic. I didn't want epic. I wanted better than epic. Amen. And God blessed us to do better than that. It was indeed paramount. And we thank the Lord for yesterday. I got messages um, after that event yesterday saying that that was what they needed. Absolutely. And I heard that from um, two people in particular that were here and I said this morning when I saw those messages, I said that out of all of those people, this room was packed yesterday. Yes, it was. I said out of all of those people that were there, two people said that they were helped, then our job is done. Yes. That's all we want to do. I know that there are others who were helped by us. They went. You know, it's it, what, what we do, we don't do it for fame, fortune, popularity, money. No. We do it to help heal the whole man. That's right. And that's what our ministry is. That's what church is. That's what salvation and deliverance is. That's what prophecy does. That's what ministry does. We want to help and heal the whole man. When your heart is right and your motives are pure, God will bless you. And I thank you all, my church family, so much. You all came out in big numbers in a big way and supported it. We so, so appreciate that. And man, you all support WTM like none other. And I thank you. My apostles, thank you. Thank you for pushing me uh, to do yes. what I do. Thank you for allowing me to stand here today. Uh, to Pastor John, thank you as well. And the New Tabernacle Ministries, we do not take this opportunity lightly. Yes. Anytime that we get a chance to proclaim the word of God, yes. it's a time that God has given you an opportunity, that God has given you to change somebody's life. So whenever you have an opportunity yes. to minister, preach, teach the word of God, do it with all you have. Amen. And ask God to lead you and he will. Amen. My mom is here today. Yes. 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 Amen. She was with us yesterday. Daddy was with us yesterday yes. too. Yes. Said back there, we all had good food. Amen. But he uh, kind of worn himself out yesterday, so he stayed in today. But we're going to pray for him. We're going to pray for him before we leave today. Yeah. Amen. We're going to pray for Mama before she leaves today. Yeah. Amen. Because she needed. Yes. Amen. If, you have, if you've never dealt with an individual who has a terminal illness, uh, you know, you don't know what it's like. But being uh, near my parents, I see what my daddy goes through and I see what she goes through yeah. taking care of him. Yeah. Amen. So she needs prayer too. I pray for her all the time, but because she's in this room today and we're together, amen, we're just going to uh, pray for her today. Amen. I am um, excited about what God is about to say and do in this room today. Amen. I do indeed have a mighty word from the Lord. It is prophetic in nature. Amen. We're prophetic ministry. And you should be glad about that. You should be glad about that. That God cares enough about us to have people in place to say what he's saying when you cannot hear what he's saying. Amen. So we thank the Lord for being in a prophetic ministry. Can I get that oh, bottle of water right there? Under, yeah. Um, amen. So we're going to uh, go into the word of God. If you have your Bibles or your phones, whatever you have. I want you to uh, turn to the book of Judges, chapter number 11. Amen. God's going to bless you real good today, I promise. God's going to bless you real good. Book of Judges, chapter number 11. I want to use the Message Bible. Uh, the two passages of Scripture. 
in that chapter. We want to deal with the first one first, and then in the latter part of the message, we're going to deal with the second portion of the scripture. Not the entire chapter, but the first part and kind of close to the last part I need to get over to you guys today. Man, uh, Judges chapter 11, we want to read verses 1 through 11, and then we'll stop right there. And man, Pastor Hogan, if you will, I call on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Judges 11 and 1. Oh, yeah. Jephthah, the Gideonite, was one tough warrior. Yeah. He was the son of a hope. Oh. But Gilead was his father. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, Gilead's legal wife had given him other sons. And when they grew up, his wife's sons threw Jephthah out. They told him, you're not getting any of our family inheritance. You're the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and went to live in the land of Tob. Some riffraff joined him and went around with him. Some time passed, and then the Ammonites started fighting Israel. <coughs> with the Ammonites at war with them, the elders of Gilead went to Jephthah from the land of Tob. They said to Jephthah, Come, be our general. Look at that. Yeah. And we'll fight the Ammonites. Okay. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, What, what did he say? But you hate me. You kicked me out of my family home. So why are you coming to me now? Because you are in trouble, right? The elders of Gilead replied, That's exactly. <laughs> That's it exactly. We come to you to get you to go with us and to fight the Ammonites. You'll be the head of all of us, yes. all the Gileadites. Jephthah yes. addressed the elders of Gilead. So, if you bring me back home to fight the Ammonites, and God gives them to me, I'll be your head. Is that right? They said, God is witness between us. Yes. Whatever you say, we'll do. Jephthah went along with the elders of Gilead. The people made him their top man and general. And Jephthah repeated what he had said before. God at this Ooh wee. Grab the person sitting next to you by the hand. Look them in their eye and prophesy to them. And say, neighbor, God is turning the tables. I wish somebody would receive that prophetically right now. God touch somebody else and tell them God is turning the tables in your favor. I wish somebody would leave that thing for that. God is turning, God is turning, turning, turning. God is turning. Woo! God is turning the table. You'll, you'll never, this, this may sound familiar to some people, you'll never be anything. Watch this. You're just like your no good father or mother. I know where you came from. These are things that people say. These are things that people say to other people. Mean, cruel, nasty things. 
Hey, watch this, watch this. Whoever came up with the statement, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That is one of the biggest lies ever told. Because words hurt. Words hurt. And depending upon where you have come from, there are some people that will hold you, Nicole, to where you came from. It was in the New Testament somewhere in one of the Gospels where someone asked, is there anything good that can come out of Nazareth? That's right. Because they know where you came from. They know who your parents were. And because of your background, they look down on you. But today, the Spirit of the Lord brought me here to tell you that God is turning the tables. I'm not going to be long either. I'm not going to be long either. I promise the sermon itself, the sermon is short. But the word of the Lord has to get out. We're going to pray and prophesy to the people of God in this house. Is that okay? Never look down on anybody. That's right. Never, 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 never look down on anybody. Because the person that you look down on today just might be the person you have to run to for help tomorrow. Jephthah, Jephthah was born with a stigma. His mother, as you read in the Message Bible, his mother was a prostitute. Even though there was a shroud of dishonor surrounding his background, Jephthah did not want his mother's questionable lifestyle to define who he was. Mm. Against all odds, he worked hard to try to make a mark and become a respectable person, someone to be reckoned with. Uh -huh. yes, yes. He, Jephthah, grew, the Bible says, to become a great, mighty warrior. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Now, those in the scripture who were, if you ever read in the Bible uh, where people were referred to as uh, warriors, as mighty warriors, they were seen as champions yes, yes. in the Bible. They were seen as heroes of their time who performed great exploits in battle, yes. like, uh, like Gideon. Yes. Like Gideon. Yes. The Bible called him a, a mighty man of valor. Yes. 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 Now, to be a mighty warrior meant that you were a person of honor. Yes. But Jephthah's brothers, who were born from another woman, were not ready to give him that type of honor. Jephthah was a warrior. He was a hero. He was a mighty man. But his siblings respected him not because of who his mother was. Oh boy. Now, the victories and the exploits that happened through Jephthah while on the battlefield meant nothing to his brothers, right? Now, though Jephthah did not choose nor was he responsible for who his parents were. His half-brothers looked down on him and discredited him and actually treated him like he was an invisible member of their family. And they did not share their family's inheritance with him because of where he came from. Uh, so he had to run away from his siblings. Yes, yes. Let, let, let me say the situations in life are not fixed. 
the tables can turn around at any time. Situations change. Only God is unchanging. He is the unchanging changer. The one that does not change, but yet changes people and situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God can step in at any time to change times. God can step in at any time to change seasons. God can step in at any time to change your situation. He can arise and turn the tables around to favor his children. Jephthah for years had been oppressed by his brothers. For years. They treated him like rubbish, like trash. But one day, God turned the tables around. And the same people, the same people, somebody say the same people, who drove him away were the same people who went looking for him. And uh, Judges chapter 11, uh, verses 4 through 10, we find that the elders of Gilead were in a fix. They were in a bit of trouble after they kicked the warrior out of the house. Then they got in trouble. They were faced with enemies who were stronger than them. They had enemies that they had no clue how to defeat. These were the Ammonites, and the Ammonites had come against them, and they needed someone to help them in battle to conquer the Ammonites. Yes, yes, yes. All of the brothers had been to war, but only one brother was a real warrior, and that was the one that they got rid of. They talked about him like a dog. You're not just like me. I'm better than you. I know who your mama is. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So they kicked him out. Ironically, the only person that could help them, obviously, in battle was Jephthah. Now sometime later, when the Ammonites made war on Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of of Tob. Yeah. From the land of Tob. The land of Tob. Yeah. The land of Tob represents a land, a place where nothings dwell. Yeah. Wow. This is a place where the Bible, the message Bible says there was a bunch of riffraff. Yes. <laughs> That's what it said. That's what it said. This was a place where people hung out that nobody wanted. Mm -hmm. This land of Tob, unfortunately, Prophet Mark, represents some people's homes. It's the truth. There's a possibility that you could be not wanted in your own house. I mean, that's what happened in the scripture. Yes. Jephthah lived yes. with his father and his siblings. Yes. Uh -huh. But he wasn't wanted nor welcomed in his own house. Yes. So he went to the place where other people yes. who also were not wanted, yes. he went and dwelt with them. That's right. Misery loves company. He, Jephthah, chose not to fight for himself. He just left. He just left. And listen, when his brothers got in trouble, when the Ammonites came against them, understand something. God never leaves himself without a witness. 
I don't care what the situation is, there is always somebody who has the hand of God. Here this man ran off to the land of Tob, but thinking the hand of God was on him. He had something that the rest of them did not have. I wish somebody was seeing themselves in this thing today. He had something that the rest of them didn't have. So he took his gift, he took the anointing, and he went, come on, to another place. And here this anointed man of God killing was hanging with a bunch of nobodies. Your anointing does not belong everywhere. Don't want to allow people to push you out of the place where God told you you need to be. That's why we have so many people jumping from church to church to church to church because they're intimidated, but they're gifted. They're intimidated, but they're anointed. But there are too many people in their ears. This is why, Charlotte, you cannot care so much about what people have to say about you. I don't care what you say. I'm anointed of God. But Jephthah went. He fled, the Bible says. The King James, King James Version says he fled from his father's house and went and dwelt in the land of Tob. But when they got in trouble, <laughs> uh, when they got in trouble, old saying says, you have to be careful how you treat people on your way up. Uh, because you'll see those same people on your way back down. They mistreated the man of God. But when they got <laughs> when they got in trouble, let me go find the man of God. So they went to the land of Tob and they found Jephthah and they said, Come, 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 come back, come back. Be our leader, be our commander, so we can beat the Ammonites. Jephthah said, hold on a minute. Come on, man. Hold on. All right, hold on. Hold on. You want me to do what now? <laughs> you kicked me out of my daddy's house. But now that you in trouble, you want to recognize and respect the anointing. Ah, oh boy. I can say something right there. Uh, I'm, well, I may as well say it. You cannot keep sitting at your tables at dinner and talking bad about the man and woman of God wherever church you at. Because when you get in trouble, the very man and woman of God that you talk crazy about are the very man and woman of God that you will need to pray you through. Touch somebody and tell them, watch your mouth, watch your mouth, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Jephthah said, wait a minute. You kicked me out, but now you need me. Hey, hey, y'all remember that song uh, Mike Jones made a long time ago? Back then, you didn't want me. Now I'm hot. Y'all want me. <laughs> so they came and got them because they were in trouble. And they didn't know what to do without him. Whether they want to recognize it or not, he was the leader in their family. Yes. Yes. Some of you listening to me right now, you are that person. Uh, Everybody comes to you for resolution. Yeah. Yeah. 
Everybody comes to you when they're in trouble. Everybody comes to you to vent. Everybody comes to you when they need money. Everybody comes to you with their problems. They pour and they pour and they pour. And sometimes, if we can be honest, it makes you just want to run away. Because you have problems of your own. Can I talk to us in here today? You got problems of your own, but yet you're trying to find a solution to somebody else's situation. Touch somebody and tell them God is turning the tables in your favor. So they said, uh, Jephthah said, why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? The elders of Gilead said unto him, nevertheless, watch this, watch this. He asked them a question and they said, nevertheless, we're here. They never answered him. They never answered Jephthah. He asked them, why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? They never answered him. They said, nevertheless, here we are. <laughs> nevertheless, they said, we are turning to you now. Come with us and fight the Ammonites, and you will be our hand. Watch this. Over all who live in Gilead. So he went from being uh, the son of a strange woman, a nobody, to being kicked out of his own house, to being the head of the entire nation. God is turning the table. In your favor. Can you find traces of yourself in just the story? Do people, uh, have people ever looked down at you because of your poor background? Have you been sidelined because you don't have the clout or a large following? Are your suggestions, your requests and applications usually ignored because you didn't attend the prestigious schools? like others did. Uh, or because you don't belong to a particular class or social status. Uh, are you being treated with disdain because of some health challenges you've been struggling with? Or because you don't have a job or you don't have children or you're not married? Do people judge you by the mistakes of your past? Have people written you off because of your background and financial level? Well, I prophesy to you today that you will encounter the God who turns the tables around and he will make the rejected become the celebrated, the despised become the honored, the undervalued, or the highly respected and appreciated. God is turning the table. Clap your hands if you believe that. Uh, when God turns the tables around to favor you, your background becomes a non-effect. A completely immaterial aspect of your life. When God turns the tables around, when he turned them around to favor Jephthah, watch this, no one remembered that he was the son of a prostitute. When God turns the tables in your favor, I don't care where you come from. God will make it as if it never happened. Do you believe that? The people did not mind having them, having him as their leader, even though he had a deplorable background. Your background is not an issue to God. Can I say that again? Your background is not an issue to God. So don't allow people to make an issue out of it. Don't allow your background to keep you from getting to heights that God has for you. Promotion in heaven is not based on background. It's based on mercy, grace, and faith. You shouldn't go 
through life miserable and depressed because you messed up. And you made some bad choices. You can, you, and listen, as long as God has not turned his back on you and he won't, you can still achieve greatness in him. Is that right? You can achieve greatness e even if successes and greatness is alien to your lineage. The buck stops with you. I don't care what happened before you. Because the hand of God is on you, the buck, somebody shout, the buck stops here. The buck stops here. When God turns the tables around to favor you, those who have been looking down at you will start looking up to you. When God turns the tables around, when he turned it around to favor Jephthah and the elders of Gilead came to him for help, he asked them, don't you hate me? Didn't you drive me from my father's house? In other words, am I not the person you were looking down on? The person you saw no good in? The person you didn't want to have anything to do with? Yes. Their response, nevertheless, we're turning to you now. So come and fight with us. Fight with us. Yeah, yeah, forget, forget all that stuff. Forget all that. What you talking about? We need you. Come, come on, come on. Come back home. And you will be head over all of Gilead. What these men, what were these men saying to Jephthah? They said, they were saying, yeah, we know we didn't do you right. We know we didn't treat you good. But our, uh, right now we need you. <laughs> we need you now. I know I called you everything but a child of God, but will you come and help me now? Y'all know somebody like that, huh? <laughs> they said, we desperately need your help. We can't make it unless we have you leading us. They were basically begging the same person they had thrown away because of his background. Man, God is amazing. Yes, he is. This amazing God will wipe away years of tears. He'll wipe away years of rejection. Those who have been looking down at you, those who that in their wildest dreams cannot imagine themselves having anything to do with you are soon coming. For your help. Don't turn them away. I just prophesied right there. Y'all missed it. Those very people. And you know who they are. They're coming back. They're coming back. And I'm telling you. That this is a test from God. I'm warning you. That God wants to see what your reaction is going to be yeah. to those who threw you out. When they come back, help them. When they come back, because they are coming back. There's some people that are going to come back to 1540 North Spalding. I know that. <laughs> and we're going to love them because that's what we do. Wherever you're watching, if you're watching live on Facebook, when they come back, help them. God trusts us with this anointing. And he wants to see what you're going to do when the people that kicked you out come back to you for help. Y'all don't mind if I don't scream and holler today, do you? That's all right. So, so, so the one that, that, that brushed you aside, one that was thrown out and trampled, is now being picked up and treated like gold. When God turns the tables around for you, even if you're in a hole, people will come looking for you. Maybe for so long you've been running after people. 
running after jobs, running after contracts and businesses, running for solutions. But today, God is turning the tables around and you're going to experience change. You're going to experience change after this day. Because God sent me to tell you that he himself is turning the tables around in your favor. The pursuer is becoming the one highly sought after. And when God turns the tables around to favor you, your value will become so great in people's eyes that you're about to be in high demand. You're going to be in high demand. You, yeah, are going to be in high demand. Whatever it is that you do, you're going to have to, I'm talking about so much so that you're going to have to say, you know what? Let me get back to you. Let me check my calendar to see if I can. That for somebody who's receiving this word. You're about to be in high demand. Whatever it is that you do, God's turning the tables for you today. People are going to look for you. I'm talking about paid trips. If you would just come, Y'all, I need somebody to receive this. They will pay for you to come. Because God is turning now. Somebody shout now. God is now turning the tables in your favor. Jephthah didn't go looking for the position. The position came looking for him. He didn't go looking for clout. It came looking for him. Yes. Testimonies will come knocking at your doorstep yes. this season. Yes. This season. This is testimony season. Yes. This is testimony season. Yes. This is testimony. Yes. I need to receive yes. This is testimony season. going to allow you the testimony that was tell people when I thought it was the end. He turned the tables. When I thought my business was going under, I got more business now than ever. When I thought I'd never get a contract, God turned that thing around. When I thought he would never heal my body, this is testimony season because God is turning, 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 turning. turning. He's turning the tables. He's turning the tables. I'm talking about booked calendars. He's turning the tables. I'm talking about overflowing accounts. 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 I'm not a prosperity preacher, but I know what the Holy Ghost said. He said accounts. More than one. Couture, if you don't have more than one, open up another one. And if you have several, open up another one. Because God is turning the tables on your businesses. Businesses. He's turning the tables. He's turning the tables. He's turning He's turning them. He's turning the tables. Somebody else ought to receive that word. Open up another account. Open up another account. A real account now. I ain't talking about nothing that rush card stuff. Open up your real bank account. Come on. You got to be in it to win it. Open up you another account. God can't bless you with overflow if you have nothing to contain. Uh-huh. I feel like praying. <laughs> the anointing of the Lord is on me today. I feel like praying in this room. God is turning the tables. This is testimony season. Somebody shout, this is testimony season. 
in Jesus' name. Are you ready for an unusual, mind-blowing change in your life? Imagine what Jephthah would have lost if he was living in bitterness. Woo! Imagine what he would have lost if he had not forgiven his brothers. He would have never become the leader that God intended for him to become because of unforgiveness and bitterness. But his brothers needed someone to save them from the Ammonites. It was a perfect opportunity for revenge. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The God that we serve, Kim, he is a God of vindication. And do you not know he can do more with your enemies with vindication than you can with revenge? Yes. Sometimes, Charlotte, you don't even have to say nothing. All you have to do is what God told you to do. And I declare the Bible says he will make your enemies keep talking, I'm going higher. Keep talking, I'm going higher. Me and my accounts. <laughs> Me and my anointing. I'm not going to waste my time trying to get you back. No, no, no. God can handle you better than I can. To somebody that was thinking about, so I'm going to show them. Don't do that. Don't do that. The hand of God is not on that. That's right. Turn it over to him yeah. and let him handle it. Oh, yeah. He's going to handle that thing for you. Yeah. He's going to handle it. And the tears that you were made to cry in sorrow and pain, when God handles it, God's going to turn those tables too. Yeah. No more tears. No more tears. Yeah. No more tears. Yeah. That thing won't cause you any more pain. Yeah. Uh, somebody receive that. That thing won't cause you no more pain. Because God is turning the tables. Now, be, uh, because, but because Jephthah, he, he forgave his brothers, he, he could help them when they were in need. By agreeing to help the same people that oppressed and mistreated him, Jephthah positioned himself for a new level in God. The battle he fought against the Ammonites landed him, you may not know this, this battle that we're talking about today, it landed him in the biblical book of heroes in Hebrews chapter 11. Yes. You remember where the Bible talks about, you know, such great cloud of witnesses and it goes on the name Abraham, the father of faith, and this person and that person. If you look in Hebrews chapter 11, you will see Jephthah's name as one of the great heroes of the faith because of this battle. God is turning the tables. Now, we, we're getting ready to pray, but let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. When God turns the tables in your favor, be careful what you do and what you say. Be careful. Because watch this. And I'm, we're not going to read. You can read the rest of it when you get home because I, I, I need to pray while this anointing is on. Jephthah, when they came back and got him, Mark, once it was verified that what they said was true, he said, okay, I'll come back. And he prayed to God. This is why you have to be careful what you say. He prayed to God and he vowed a vow. He said, God, if you give me this battle, yes, he did. Yes, he did. when I get back home, who, whatever comes out of my house first, I'll give it to you. I'll sacrifice it yes. to you. Yes. I don't know if he thought an animal was coming out first. 
or whatever he thought was going to come out first. But he made a vow to God. And when God answered him, Ken, and gave him what he asked for, he gave him the battle. They won the victory against the Ammonites. Yes. And when he got home, help us, Lord, yes. the first thing that walked out of the house was his daughter. Yeah. You have to be careful what you say in this season because it's so sensitive in the Holy Ghost that whatever you say will happen. He said, God, if you give me this victory, I sacrifice whatever comes out of my house first. And here comes his daughter. And he said, oh my God, what have I done? The daughter said, well, Daddy, what's, what's going on? What's wrong? He said, I made a vow to the Lord and I can't take it back. And she said, so be it. As long as God gave you the victory, let his will be done. My brothers and my sisters, be careful what you vow in this season because it could cost somebody's life. Turn that off. We're going to get ready to pray.